people of the internet, welcome back to some Five Nights at Freddy's news. In today's video, we got details on a recent gameplay presentation for Secret of the Mimic. Into the Pit has finally launched on consoles, but there is a catch. We got some new plushie reveals from U2's Hex and even Funko. I mean, there is so much to talk about today. So if you're excited, scroll down, tickle that subscribe button. That's right, I'm bringing back the catchphrase. And so to kick off today's FNAF news video, let's talk about two brand new companies that have just acquired the FNAF license. The first company is Fnatic, and as you can see, they've already got a couple products up for pre-order. Some Freddy Fazbear Pizza and Mega Pizza Plex coasters, a replica security badge, some decal stickers, a tote bag, as well as a Mega Pizza Plex wallpaper. And then the second company is Roosevelt's. They've just released a ton of FNAF t-shirts, some hoodies, as well as some hats. I honestly really dig the designs of some of these products. I think the art looks spectacular. And I'm also a bit biased because they're going to be sending me some of their products, so Mad shout out to Roosevelt's. And now let's move on to U2's because they've just released this teaser for the back of Phantom Chica's box. You can also see the concept art that we've seen previously for the Phantom Chica figure. And for this upcoming FNAF 3 wave, we'll be getting Phantom Chica, Phantom Freddy, as well as a second Springtrap figure. Previously, we also took a look at their Chica and Foxy monitor buddies. These are little figures that sit on top of your desktop monitor. And to go along with Chica and Foxy, of course, we got Freddy and Bonnie in a two-pack as well. These figures look look absolutely adorable. I feel like a healthy figure for monitor buddies would be perfect. Austin from YouTube has also showed off our first look at upcoming Roxanne slippers. You may remember a couple months ago they posted a poll for which FNAF character will get slippers next. Now Freddy did win that poll and they're still making some Freddy Fazbear slippers but it seems like we're also getting some Roxanne slippers probably because she was also pretty close to winning the poll with Freddy. All I know is that I can't wait for these guys to release so I can wake up and stick my feet just right in Roxanne. And next up for U2's, their second FNAF movie wave is coming up. And U2's has just revealed a Sparky the Dog plushie, who started off as a community hoax all the way back in FNAF 1, then had a very surprising cameo in the FNAF film. So Sparky's getting a plushie, Vanessa Shelley is also getting a plush, with Austin on Twitter showing off Vanessa's plushie, and honestly, I think it looks pretty good. And keen-eyed viewers might spot that right next to Vanessa is actually a plushie of Grim Foxy. So we got two brand new plushies in this one. One teaser. And then in the U2's Discord server, Austin gave a bit of a roadmap for their upcoming FNAF drops, revealing that two more waves are planned before the end of the year. And of course, they got more stuff coming in 2025. And now moving on to Hex, they've released a whole bunch of products. First up is the brand new Nightmare Own wave, with this wave including, of course, the Nightmare Own plushie, which has LED glowing eyes. Also included is a shirt, beanie, hat, and pin. And then we also saw the apparel launch for Springtrap, with the long anticipated Springtrap hoodie, as well as a Fazbear Frights t-shirt. And then, as for upcoming Hex plushies, Docker recently showed off the Funtime Freddy prototype. The head, I do think, could use a bit of adjusting, especially with the mouth and the eye placement. But the body looks absolutely spot on, especially the adorable Bon Bon hand puppet. The sister location wave should be releasing before the end of the year, and Docker also showed off a brand new look at the baby plushie. On the shelf, you can also spot the previously revealed Mr. Cupcake plushie from the FNAF film. The Bon Bon hand puppet plush is also above Circus Baby, but then behind her, you can see the four Glamrock animatronics, Roxanne, Monty, Freddy, and Chica. With Docco then showing off a clearer look at the upcoming Glamrock Freddy Hex plushie, Docco has said that for the final plushie, Freddy's head will be shrunken a little bit, as well as the lightning bolt, that's gonna be a bit spikier. I'd love to know what are your thoughts on the sister location and Glamrock wave so far, we still have yet to see Ballora. And then lastly, for plushies, we gotta talk about Funko. Because even though I feel like I need to explain this every single FNAF news video, yes, Funko has lost the action figure and plushie license to Jazzwares, with Jazzwares getting ready for their plushie and figures waves releasing next year. There were several products recently that were already in development before this licensing change happened, and one of those products is this brand new 10-inch Golden Freddy plushie. For some reason, this guy's branded as a, quote, pop plushie. I'm not quite sure why he's branded as such, though he is exclusive to Hot Top if you're looking to pick him up. So yes, while Jazzwares did take Funko's figure and plushie license, 
Funko was already making some products. That's why we're still seeing some plushies from them. Now, reportedly, Funko is still able to make some of their original wave of products like Funko Snaps and Funko uh, Pop Figures and Mystery Minis. I feel like I need to clarify that anytime I talk about Funko because then I just get a bunch of comments like, what, I thought Funko lost the license. But hopefully that makes sense. Now let's move on. Recently, Daco and FNAF revealed that they'll be interviewing a whole bunch of FNAF folks, including a bunch of voice actors from Security Breach and Ruin, Deregular Sauce, as well well as Matthew Lillard. They'll be streaming the Q&A on their channels on October the 26th, and via Streamly, you can also pick up some signed prints from these folks. And actually, speaking of interviews, Daco's third season of the FNAF show is finally underway. If you're not sure, the FNAF show is basically an interview series hosted by Daco, where he asks questions to various FNAF voice actors, developers, etc. And for the first interview of this brand new season, he'll be interviewing Marta Svedek. She's the voice actress for Roxanne Wolf, Vanny, as well as Greg in FNAF Security Breach. And now let's talk about Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit. Because finally the game is launched on consoles including Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5. Though if you were there on launch day September 27th, you may realize that the Nintendo Switch port did not actually get released. With Mega Cat making the announcement, we're still not sure what's going on with the Switch version. But we're continuing to investigate the issue. We will update you with more information as it becomes available. And then a few days ago, they released yet another update. For the Switch port, apparently the game didn't launch on time because of a bug due to the old developer build that leaked on the eShop around August. Though in the announcement, Megacat said this issue is our highest priority and we're aiming to have it fixed and resubmitted for their approval by the end of the week. We're working closely with Nintendo to get things approved and released as quickly as possible and we'll be updating you with more information as it becomes available to us. It seems like they're also working on some bug fixes for PlayStation and Xbox, so if you're having trouble with those platforms, just hold out for a bit longer until a fix is available. So finally, console players can play Into the Pit, though. Unfortunately, it's had a bit of a rocky launch, but Mega Cat is hard at work, so hopefully pretty soon every platform can have a smooth gaming experience. And lastly, for today's FNAF News video, let's talk about Steel Wool Studios, because recently they showed some behind-the-scenes construction of their PAX West booth this year. I can't believe PAX West is already a month old. I just want it to be 2025 so I can go back. Of course, at PAX West, they had a playable demo of the upcoming Secret of the Mimic title. The recording was strictly prohibited. Not even Daco could post gameplay. And every FNAF fan was kind of getting their hopes up because a couple weeks after PAX West, it was revealed that Secret of the Mimic would be at Fantastic Games 2024. With Steel Wool after the event teasing fans once more showing off the game area, as well as even showing someone playing the Secret of the Mimic demo, and actually a playable demo was not the only thing they had at Fantastic Fest, with a 20-minute presentation going over Secret of the Mimic also being held at the convention. Unfortunately, the presentation was not live-streamed and recording was also strictly prohibited. Apparently, FNAF was like the only segment at this presentation that you could not record. Though, after the event, Day of the Devs, who hosted Fantastic Games, released kind of an overview of the presentation with all of the games, and they had this to say about Secret of the Mimic. Last but certainly not least, we have another in the screamingly devilish, lore-packed Five Nights series. This preview is kept a bit under wraps, showing off the mimic. I'm a bit behind on my story knowledge of Five Nights these days, but I know that he's kind of an endoskeleton baddie who has taken on a few different forms. This game will unravel some of the mysteries behind this fan-favorite villain, but what that means will need to be revealed elsewhere. So with that summary of the mimic presentation, I saw a lot of people be like, <laughs> fan favorite, get a load of this guy. I'm more so wondering why they're calling the Mimic a baddie. But seriously, unfortunately, we still have to wait a bit longer to see some gameplay of the Mimic. I understand how frustrating it is for the casual fan not getting to see this game, especially when Steel Wool is comfortable showing it off at private events. But also keep in mind the announcement of this game is not even two months old. We still have to wait for 2025 for it to be released. So as frustrating as it can be, trust me when I say, let's just let Steel Wool cook. They've got a really, really good time title on their hands. And when they finally do show off this game, the wait will be worth it. Trust me on this. Well, that is going to do it for this FNAF news video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.